Now that I've covered linear combinations and the span of a list of vectors, the next two fundamental concepts in linear algebra are the basis and dimension of a vector space. Let's tackle what a basis is first. A basis is a list of vectors in a vector space that satisfies two criteria. One, it spans the vector space, and two, it is linearly independent. Okay, so what does it mean for a list to span a vector space? Well, all it means is that the span of the list is equal to the entire vector space. And since the span is just the set of all linear combinations, a very important implication of this is that any vector in the space can be written as a linear combination using only the vectors that make up the list. Now I can't stress enough how useful this simple fact is. It shows up again and again in many linear algebra problems as well as quantum mechanics problems. So make sure you understand it well. Okay, next up is linear independence. In order to understand this, let's consider a list of n vectors taken from a vector space. Then consider the following equation, where a1, a2, all the way up to an are scalars, and you are free to choose any of them that live in the underlying field of the vector space. Then, if the only way to satisfy this equation is by choosing each of these scalars to be zero, then that means the list is linearly independent. But if there is a way to satisfy this equation where at least one of the scalars is not equal to zero, then the list is called linearly dependent. Now, to let all that sink in, let's consider a simple example. We'll take a look at the Cartesian plane, or what is, from a linear algebra perspective, the vector space of R2. The standard basis of this vector space is i hat and j hat, the vectors that have length 1 in the x direction and y direction. These are also frequently called x hat and y hat. This is a basis because any vector in R2 can be written as a linear combination of the two, with the appropriate scalars coming from the real numbers. So these two vectors, x hat and y hat, span the entire space. They are also linearly independent since the only way to satisfy this equation is to take a equals zero and b equals zero. Okay, since the definition of a basis has been cleared up, it is now straightforward to understand the closely related concept of dimension. The dimension of a vector space is the length that any basis will have. Well, to be a bit more precise, the dimension of a finite dimensional vector space is the length of any of its bases. This is a well-defined definition since for any finite dimensional vector space, every basis will have the same finite length. So in the previous example, since the basis for R2 has only two vectors, then the dimension of it is just two, as we would expect. However, there are some very interesting subtleties that arise when trying to define a basis for an infinite dimensional vector space. In fact, the question of whether every vector space actually has a basis is the source of an extremely fascinating connection between linear algebra and mathematical logic. The answer to this simple question turns out to be equivalent to two concepts known as the axiom of choice and Zorn's lemma. And in the next video I make for this playlist, I will go into detail about this connection. So be sure to stay tuned. Okay, that's it for the concepts of basis and dimension of a vector space. Although somewhat simple, these two concepts are absolutely fundamental to the study of linear algebra and its applications in fields like quantum mechanics.